Hi again. Today is April 13th. It's Monday. I hope everyone had a fantastic Easter. It was a little windy and rainy, but I had fun being with family, and I hope you were able to do the same. Let's go ahead and do our math program math problems first. We're going to do multiplication. It says write the turnaround fact for each problem. So if 5 times 2 equals 10, then 2 times 5 equals 10. If 6 times 4 equals 24, then 4 times 6 equals 24. If 7 times 5 equals 35, then 5 times 7 equals 35. <clears throat> okay, now they want us to do an array. If we have four three times, we're going to have four rows and three times, in three in each row. So we would say four three times, four times three. Five times four, we are going to do five plus five plus five plus five. Because we're going to add five four times, or five times four. And then we're going to have five rows of four. So that's an array. Okay, right here we have an array. We don't have the multiplication or addition problem, but the array is three rows. How many times? Five. So we would be doing this. We would go three plus three plus three plus three plus three, five times. Okay, six. Plus six, plus six, plus six. That would be six rows. How many times? One, two, three, four. Four. And that would be the same as saying six times four. <clears> hmm. <throat> okay, now they want us to draw a line segment parallel to the line segment AB and label it EG. If it's parallel, remember, that means it's a straight line that won't cross the other line. If we do a straight line, that's never going to cross, is it? So that would be parallel to this line. And they want us to label the points E and G. So we would just do that. And that is parallel to A and B. Oh, we forgot to do up here. Let's go up here. Okay, if we have A and take away 2, oh, we're, we're adding though. We got to look at that sign. So 8 plus 2, we have 10 in the 1s. And we have 6 in the 10s and 12 in the hundreds. So can we put this 10 over here and make it a 7? Yeah. So we have 12 hundreds and 7 tens and now we have 0 ones. And I shouldn't have put that there. The answer is right here. The, over here they want us to estimate. So I'm sorry I did that. Let's cross that out. To estimate, we want to put 700, we want to put it to the nearest 100, it says. So if we're going to put 708 to the nearest 100, is 708 closer to 700 or 800? 700. Because anything under the 5, if it's 5 or less in the 10 spot, then it's going to be the one below. If it's anything above in the 10th spot for the hundreds, then it would be 
the one above. So 700, so this would be 600 is a estimate. We have zero ones, zero tens, and 13 hundreds. So pretty close, it was just off by 30. <clears throat> Okay, how much money is this? These are quarters. So we have 25, 50, 75, a dollar, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65. So we have a dollar 65. These are dimes, they're worth 10. <clears throat> now we have to find what goes here. What goes in that spot? There's different ways we could do it. Let's go ahead and do 85 minus 59. Okay, can I take nine away from five? No, let's go over to the 10 spot. Now we have seven in the tens and five ones, or 10 more ones. So we have 15 ones minus nine would be six, 7 minus 5 would be 2, so we have 26. To correct that and um, see if that's the right answer, you can do 26 plus 59 and see if it equals 85. Do some fact families. Okay, now let's do some more addition, kind of like what we did up here. 4 plus 2 is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. So we have 6 in the 1s, 8 in the 10 spot and 15 when I add all those up. So we have 1,586. Okay, I'm gonna look at this. I know that four plus five is nine, and nine plus nine is 18. So I have 18 ones, seven tens, and 14 hundreds. I'm going to put one of those tens with the seven, so I'm going to make that an eight. So we have 1,488. Inferences. That's a fun one for this week, the kite. There's been so much wind going on. But it says, it was a perfect day to fly her kite. So what do you think that means? Do you think it was breezy and not stormy? I bet it was a little breeze. So I'm going to put, there was a little breeze. Because can you find it? Can you fly a kite if there isn't a little bit of a breeze? No, there wouldn't be anything to keep it up flying. Okay, we have ah sounds, and the way they're using the words that they want, the letters they want us to use are a w or a u. So for saw, it's going to be a w. Sauce, oh no, straw, would be A-W. If it was sauce, it would be A-U. And I looked at this and I thought it was fall. And I had to think, what? Well, uh, fall says the ah sound, but that's spelt with A. But So then I had to think, and I'm like, oh, autumn. What are some more words that describe the word angry? I would say mad and upset. Would those both kind of be the same thing as angry? Yeah, I think so. Okay, classify words. Write a word that belongs with the group. We have triangle, square, rectangle. So those are all shapes. So I'm going to write circle because that's a shape. And then we have winter, spring, summer, fall.
Okay, they want us to sort the words into correct categories. These are all adjectives over here. We have eight, massive, narrow, three, scrawny, and round. Those are all adjectives. Adjectives can tell us how many, they can tell what shape, and they can tell what size they are. So let's go ahead and put these in the right category. How many? Eight. That would describe how many. Massive. Do you think that tells us the size? Yeah. Like we had a massive thunderstorm the other day. Scared my dogs. Narrow. I'm going to say that's going to show the shape. It could also maybe be the size, but I'm guessing that is the shape, because if it's narrow, it's going to be kind of long and skinny. Three, that tells us how many. Scrawny, that is definitely a size. That means little. And round would be shape. Those are all words that you could use to describe things. Those are all adjectives. <clears throat> Verbs. I like the verb in each set below. Okay, a verb is an action. Is flu or flowers an action word? Something that can be done. Flu. Flowers would be a noun. Woods or chirp, chirped? Woods would be a noun, chirped would be the verb because it's something that can be done, like a bird chirps. And then we have hair and shakes. Shakes is something you can do. We haven't been doing, we haven't been shaking hands lately though, have we? But maybe your dog, when it gets wet outside and comes in, it shakes, shakes, shakes. And hair would also be a noun. The correct way to spell the word push is P-U-S-H. Hopefully you learned something new today. Um, send me an email today. Tell me how things are going at school. Um, let me know if there's something I can do differently. Have a good day at home. Love ya.